Hey everybody, it's Mazzy 616 with another video for you today. And by the way, first off, thank you guys for having my last video get as many views as it did. I got 15. I was really excited about that. And I'm really excited to bring you guys the Grohl Stompy deck for standard. Now, I did watch the professor's review on these challenger decks. If you can, I strongly go recommend it because he does have a bit more meta relevance in it. But I really wanted to open this one for one reason, one reason only. If you guys know what this channel is, this channel does dragons. And there's one very specific card in here that I want. But first, let's take a look at it, see how everything looks. It doesn't really have any distinguishing features to let you know it's a standard deck. I'm kind of sad at the box art. They could have done something similar to this or anything really. But this does have, as you can see, we're going to double check that Goldspan Dragon at the time of release of this was $27. Now the price is going to go down because it's been released. For those that don't know, these standard decks, they mimic actual meta decks right now. So the main standard play, take a few cards out of it, replace them, and you'll get a full-fledged uh, standard deck that you can actually play at your LGS, things like that. But these can be a good starting point. And they're really inexpensive right now. They're $31 at Walmart. You can get them on Amazon for, I think, $25 which means that this Goldspan Dragon's price is going to drop, but it's one dragon I didn't have. It is a red-green deck, and I want that's Grohl, so that's from Guilds of Ravnica. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of these. I'm, I'm going to throw up the prices of anything over like 50 cents. Some of these are going to be like 25 cents. Not very worth it. If I make a comment on the card, we are definitely going to check it out. I know this one's about a dollar, and I believe we got two of them. We've got Tovalar's Huntmaster, which is a werewolf that will flip. Uh, Overworld Oddity thing flips into the behemoth. It's actually not bad. Like I said, most of these cards are going to be relatively inexpensive. You've got Twin Shot Sniper, which is a Goblin Archer. You've got Halana and Alia, Alina Partners. The lore behind these, if you can watch Magic Arcanum, the lore is fantastic. you got another Twin Shot, and this is what we were looking for, the Gold Span Dragon. So let's read it and see why this card may be so good. So first off, Flying in Haste. It's a 4-4 four, for four, 5 Flying. That can be useful. It's its second ability, I believe. Second and third. Whenever Goldspan Dragon attacks or becomes the target of a spell, create a treasure token. So treasure tokens are normally tap, sacrifice, you get one man of any color. Treasure tokens were broken AF back whenever it came out. But here's the big kicker. If he's still on the field, Treasures you control have tap, sacrifice, add two mana of any one color. So you can double up your mana. So Goldspan Dragon, definitely a good card. Light Up the Night is a good removal spell. You've got Abraid, deals three damage to target creature, or you can destroy target artifact, another cheap removal spell. Those are always fun to have. That one's from Crimson Vale. Nice, we've got Snakeskin Veil. Put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control, it gains hexproof until end of turn. You've got Goldspan Dragon out, spend a green. Hit it with Snakeskin Veil. You get two, you get a treasure token, you get two extra mana, you can loop that for a long way. However, you won't be able to cast it again because Hexproof, I believe, prevents you from being able to target it too. No, Hexproof is only opponent, so you can stack that up. Thunder Rebuke deals four damage to target creature or planeswalker. You stack a couple of those plus one plus one counters on gold span. Hit your gold span, get more mana. I mean, this is a very mana intense one. Reach, tap an untapped creature you control, add one mana of any color. This thing is all about just pumping mana out like there is no tomorrow. Drop to the fourth one, but that's okay, those are comments. You've got Ranger Class, enters battlefield, create a 2 2 wolf creature token. You can bump it up to level 2 whenever you attack, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target attacking creature. Level 3, you may look at the top card of your library, you may cast creature spells from the top of your library. You get this with some library manipulation. Oh my goodness, they remove it, you have another one. They remove it, you have another one. It's a cheap spell to keep in there. I'd probably take one or two out and kind of switch it around. Let's see what this Dwarf Berserker does. You get plus one, plus zero. That's kind of a weird one. You don't have a whole lot of dwarves. Whenever it becomes tapped, create a creature token. You can bump it up with the... Let me pull it out of here real quick. Go ahead and uh, match it with this, Jasper Sentinel. So you create a treasure token. You get mana. Sacrifice five treasures, search your library for an artifact for a dragon card, put that card into the battlefield, then shuffle your library. Bam, you've got Goldspan Dragon from your deck. 
into the battlefield. That is just an amazing ability if you can play it right. Of course, you're going to want a couple of those. Those are good ones. Four might be a bit much. I'm not sure. Vigilance, when it enters the battlefield, investigate. You can sacrifice the artifact, draw a card. As long as you control a token, it gets plus two, plus zero. So it creates a uh, clue token. Oh, man, you've got all sorts of little shenanigans to do with that. Like I said, if any of these cards are kind of high value, I'll go ahead and post it up. You have Rockfall Veil. This is actually a good card that's going to drop the price being reprinted in this particular set. But Rockfall Veil are, was one of the chase lands in uh, Midnight Hunt. It's what's known as a slow land. So you can add a uh, mountain or a forest, but you have to have two or it comes in tapped. So it's a good first turn play if you don't have first turn play. And unlike other tap lands, if you've got it in your hand, you know, halfway through the game, it's still not bad. I love the fact that they included the forest lands from Midnight Hunt. I love the look of these lands. Them and Crimson Vow are my two favorite lands so far. You've got Layer of the Hydra. Enters the battlefield tapped if you control two or more other lands, so it's a good first turn one. Until end of turn, it becomes an XX Green Hydra. It's still a land. X can't be zero. So you still have to spend a man to get it. You've got the Midnight Hunt Mountains. And let's just take a look. Uh, if that's not Gothic Horror, I don't know what is. Absolutely love it. Beautiful, beautiful lands. I'm still keeping that dragon out because that gold span dragon is going to go into my commander deck. That I'm building as soon as I get that finished, I'm going to be buying a lot of the cards because trying to search through Modern Horizons and things like that, whereas it is fun, isn't the best use of your money if you're actually trying to build a deck. For you guys, I love opening cards. I'll open cards always. Uh, I'll open product, we'll review it, we'll see what the score is overall. I'm gonna try not to take the professor's rating scale, but he does have a good one. And I do love college, but we'll see what we can do from here. This will be your sideboard plus your tokens. So your sideboard, you can have up to 15 cards in your sideboard. Almost all competitive decks have a sideboard because it allows you to respond to different threats. In competitive play, it's the best of three matches. So you play with your normal deck on the first match, you figure out what they have, what you can counter, and then you switch cards in uh, accordingly. So say, for instance, you find you didn't have enough card draw, you have plenty of mana, but not enough card draw, you could tap in uh, Tovalar, keep some of the wolves that we viewed in the first one, and every time it deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. If you control three or more wolves and or werewolves, it becomes night, then transform any number of human werewolves you control, and he turns into Tovalar, the Midnight Scourge. You control deals damage, draw a card, target werewolf gains X and gains trample, night bound. Definitely, definitely a fun mechanic to play. I'm not big on werewolves. I prefer the vampire aspect of the Innistrad block, but they all have their place. Now we're looking at Burning Hands deals two damage to target creature or planeswalker is green. It deals six damage instead. Say that you're doing a mono green, you know, romp stomp deck. They've got Cultivator Colossus. They've got things like that. You can play Burning Hands and you deal six damage to it, which I'm pretty sure might just take Cultivator Colossus out. I don't remember it off the top of my head. You've got Kappa Tech Wrecker from Kamigawa. It's a turtle ninja. You might think of Ninja Turtles. Looks kind of like Leonardo, but more grungy. Definitely like that. He's got ninjutsu, enters the battlefield with a death touch. Deals combat damage, remove to counter from it. When you do exile, target artifact or enchantment that player controls. It's Kamigawa, that's actually not a bad hand. Another couple of burning hands. We got Kappa Tech Wrecker Showcase, which just looks amazing. I wish they'd make them all showcase, but that might be too good for a $31 deck. Whew, gonna breathe a little bit. Now we're going Thundering Rebuke. Deals four damage to target creature or planeswalker. If you bump up that gold span dragon, you can do damage to it. Hopefully they don't, you know, if you're doing mono green, they don't have a whole lot of damaging spells. When it enters the battlefield, exile target card from a graveyard. Exile all cards from all graveyards, then draw a card. Definitely not a bad one with it drawing cards and things like that. Plus, if they have uh, like a reanimation deck, you can exile the cards that they would be reanimating. Excellent use of that card. Another twin shot sniper, another twin shot sniper. You got Frog Hemoth. Frog Horror, 4-4, four, four, Trample with Haste for 5 mana. Deals combat damage, that many cards from the graveyard. Put a plus one, plus one counter for each creature card exiled this way. You gain one life. Holy crap, that's actually a good one. I like that. And then we go to our tokens. I love looking at tokens. These things are absolutely gorgeous. Look at that Armored Wolf. Got another one. Are they reversible? You got Treasure on the back. You got another Wolf Creature token. Another Treasure on the back. 
more wolves. You've got the day night bound. You've got your double sided cards. You got a clue on the back of that one and probably a clue on the back of that one. So I actually really like this deck. I think this one may have one of the banned cards in it, which is not Gold Span Dragon, but I think another card is banned in standard play. These are meant for standard. They are meant to be played with the current meta. Some of it rotates out, I think at the start of next month. But the main cards you'd be buying this for, let's face it, you'd be buying it for the Gold Span Dragon and building a deck around it. You can switch out some of the cards with some of the newer ones from Kamigawa, from Crimson Vow, from Midnight Hunt. Have a little bit of longevity to the set, but definitely I do recommend picking up the Grohl Stompy if you can, specifically for Gold Span Dragon. One, look at that. That is just a gorgeous card. And it's from Kaldeheim. So that's the Kaldeheim set. It's a mythic. It was $27 at the time of printing. I'm sure the price is tanked. But you get a gold span dragon and that is good. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Please let me know if you liked it down below. Like, share, subscribe, comment. You guys know how to do all the things. I really appreciate everybody watching. Can't thank you guys enough. Look for my next video up on Wednesday. And guys, as always, I'll see you next time.